Hi everyone, it's Cobra again, and uh, today I'm filming how to start a minimalist lifestyle. So this video is for uh, who's been curious about how to start a minimalist lifestyle. So it may be for like different reasons that you ended up here. Maybe you're fed up with the consumerist lifestyle, or you're moving somewhere and you don't want to have so much stuff, or whatever the reason may be. Here are some tips that I have to start your journey to being a minimalist. Number one, decluttering. This is like the thing that most people, if you're from the West, you have a lot of stuff. This is the first thing that people usually start with, with minimalism. It's like downsizing your stuff. Um, depending where you are in the spectrum, usually people recommend getting a box. Declutter everything, put it in the box if you're not sure if you want to donate it or not, and put that box away for a month and see what you can and can't live with. Another thing is if you're ready with, like if you're ready with the items that you want to get rid of or declutter, um, if you're in the West, you have the option of giving it away to uh, Goodwill, give it to friends or family. Note, the KonMari method states if you don't need it, your friends and family don't need it. So, just take it to Goodwill. But if you feel like, you know, you know your circumstances better, if you feel like, yeah, this would be a good item for X and Y person, then yeah, donate it to that. Okay, so now that you've decluttered, you're wondering like how to dec- I'm trying to think back like how I used to do it. Um, I'll just go with the KonMari method because I thought her way was pretty sensible. She usually st states uh, clothes. Clothes is like a good place to start. She recommends leaving mementos, like photos and sentimental items to last because you get caught up in that. Then move to books, then to miscellaneous like DVDs and whatnot and little junks you have in your drawers and then finally um, uh, sentimental stuff. For sentimental stuff, I recommend has negative Memories, get rid of it. You don't need to remember it. And things that have good memories, uh, you gotta pick and choose. I'd say pick your top five stuff and everything else has to go. You'd be surprised like um, what your brain can remember. You don't need the mementos to remind you. So there's a little tough love. Tip number two, putting things away. Okay, so you've decluttered, right? Okay, so uh, my recommendation for a minimalist lifestyle is that you keep on the top is like the bare minimum. Maybe your laptop and your phone and a cup. Everything else, if you can, put it away in drawers, um, out of sight, out of mind. Of course, keep it organized within the drawers, but keep your surfaces decluttered to the maximum. Haha, <laughs> maximum, minimum. A recommendation that I find to be really big into like house ornaments, having that cute little statue there and whatnot. You don't need those things. Get rid of it. Maybe just one as your staple piece. Everything else, get rid of it. You don't need it. You're, you're, minim you're becoming a minimalist. It's really easy to get caught up in the idea that uh, minimalism is about having less, less and less. It's not. Minimalism is actually about having more of the important stuff. So that's kind of like a mind mindset that like most people kind of don't grasp. A lot of people get caught up in the idea that I need to own X and Y amount of shirts and shoes when that's not what minimalism is about. I mean, if that is what it is for you, then that's, that's what it is for you. But minimalism, at least as I've come to understand it and what I've like read from other blogs, minimalism is about getting rid of the distractions, getting rid of the excess, and keeping the minimal, the most important stuff, whatever that may be to you. So like you'll find that maybe you've decluttered and you know what, you realize my little pony is my life and everything that I want it to be about. So you can have an excess of my little pony, but everything else, you gotta get rid of where the focus is. So don't focus on having less, focus on what's important. Once you know what's important, everything else you can do away with so you'll have more time for the important stuff. Four, I guess. All right, now that you've decluttered and you focused on what's important, you need, so now you've got more time and you got more money and you're wondering like, I, it's funny, I actually had this minimalist problem where I felt like I had too much money and I didn't really know what to do with it. I was buying like random things that I didn't even need, like not, things but like food. It's that point when you have a lot more time and a lot more Take it easy, relax, enjoy the process and use that and put it back into what's important. So um, whether that be investing or um, putting it back into your hobby. Number five, yeah I'm, I'm eating as I talk to you guys. Number five, you've decluttered and you're wondering okay so what is important to me? What's my focus? What's the meaning of my life? My purpose? What do I want to spend my days with? Because some of our days is your life. What you do on a daily is your life. So what do you want to do with it? Um, this was a really tough question for me. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and like that kind of gave me an idea. He was talking about how like use money to get financial freedom, to get out of the rat race. So he could do whatever he wanted during the day. Which is essentially like what you want to do with minimalism. Is you want to spend your hours and your time and your money and your energy on what makes you happy. So it, I kind of used money as the basis for it. If I didn't have to worry about money, what would I do with my time? So like say you were in a situation where your bills were paid, you didn't have to go to work, 
to spend your time doing anything you wanted, what would you do with your time? I like to think that most people would kind of have some intuitive idea of what they would do with their time. And I, I don't know, I'm not judging, but I don't think there's any shame in how you want to spend your time. If it brings you the most joy to spend your whole day watching Netflix, by all means, go for it. I found though from um, experience, I took a psychology class, you feel the most meaningful in your life when you're actually doing something. So being productive or being creative or doing something and entering a concept known as flow, which is when you lose track of time, that's when you're most happy. So I recommend that um, finding something meaningful in your life that involves you doing something or creating something. <laughs> So kind of just to sum it up, so essentially, um, what is, yeah, that wraps up my videos. Uh, five tips on how to get started with minimalism. If you like this uh, video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe for more Cobra goodness and minimalism goodness, um, there's hit the subscribe button below. If you want to leave any comments, um, I greatly appreciate them. I read all the comments that come my way and I always reply. So I, I would love to have this discussion with you, hear what your thoughts are. So till next time. What is minimalism? It's getting rid of the excess, focusing your time, your money, and your energy and what's important to you. Asking yourself the question, if I didn't have to worry about money, what would I do with my time? Uh, I don't think that there's any shame in any activity that you choose to do. I recommend activities that are meaningful, um, productive, and creative. I think that those are the ones that are going to make you the most happy.